thousands today. It's starting to feel like camp today, on daylight today when it's so so hot and humid and, and y'all are out here in Jersey. Honestly, this camp has probably been my best camp, most exciting and most fun camp. Uh, of course, my first camp, not knowing what's really going on. I didn't even know what Jerby was my freshman year. So my first camp, it was kind of, it was really tough, very treacherous. I was fighting an uphill battle my whole, my whole, <laughs> my whole freshman year and sophomore year out here in our fall camp. But now this year, the D-line, we're very cohesive. We love, we love playing together. We love just being around each other. So regardless of where we're playing, Jerby, practice fields, or Memorial Stadium, or any stadium, we just, we love the game, we love each other, so it's really just a fun time out here. So, what were your goals or things you really wanted to improve on? And uh, really, uh, be staying a very consistent uh, run stuffer and improving and on being a more consistent pass rusher. That, that was those main two things, and uh, pre snap reads and really scouting the offense, scouting the offensive line, being a really being a student of the game. Yeah, those, those are the three things that I really want to improve on. Coach, yeah. Uh, yeah, Coach Hall said that there were like three or four sacks you just missed. Like you're just kind of like, this close to the ones yeah. you missed. Them. I mean, did you go through and review those? I mean, oh yeah, we well the games on Saturday. I'm re I'm reviewing it Saturday night or Sunday morning. So I'm I'm seeing it. I'm the biggest critic on myself more than anybody. So I. I I already remember two sacks from NC State that I had. I had the quarterback wrapped up, let him go. Yeah, those two I really dread, but you know, always room to improve. So, yeah. Guess what's the key to finishing those plays? Uh, really effort, effort, leverage, stand low, staying true, stand true to my technique. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of times when I get to the quarterback, I can kind of get got a little lazy sometimes, and thought thought it was just a given. I got to the quarterback, he'll go down, but no, I got to finish the play. Where's your confidence at going into this year? Uh, confidence is very high. Confidence has always been very high for myself. And as a D-line unit, as a defensive unit, and as a team, my confidence is very high. Confidence has always been high. It's going to stay there. Uh, I know what we need to improve on as a D-line unit defense. So my, com my, my confidence is always going to be up there. What do you say for some of the other guys on the defensive line? Oh man, KJ. KJ's always been consistent, like mentally and physically. Physically, uh, really, KJ and XT and Max. They all, they all, they've all bought into the system, uh, nutrition wise. They've all really paying attention to what the stuff they eat, what they do uh, hourly, and you really see, you really see the transition on on their body type and their. You know what what they do before practice, before before a game, like they really pay attention to all that stuff. And honestly, that me watching them, learning from them, and it kind of like spreads spread around to the entire D line. Everyone on the D line is buying into what the coaches are saying, what the nutritionists are saying, what Coach Sweeney is saying on play style, uh, preparing like a, preparing like a pro. That's that's our biggest thing, and you really see the you really see the outcome on the field. Miles, what, yeah. What's it mean to have uh, Brzee back? Oh, it means a lot. Uh, yeah, me and me and Brian, because we've been connected since high school, so having Brian back, we've been talking back and forth. You know, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be ready. How uh, how good are you? 75, 85 percent. But now that I'm seeing him in fall camp, he looks he looks phenomenal. Honestly, he looks great on the field. Uh, like 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 his high school self, but. Bigger, stronger, faster, more in tune with the game, reading the backfield sets. It's, it, in my opinion, just like perfect where he is now. Always room to improve, but where he is now, he's making those strides where he needs to be. Miles, you were uh, on the top freaks on the athletics list, and you can't look at a mock draft without seeing your name towards the top. Do you spend much time reading any of that stuff? Do you put much stock in, in outside opinions on your game? Uh, no, not at all, because last year, a lot of in a lot of my drafts, my dad was telling me this. Uh, Trayvon Walker was not even mentioned in a lot of the first round draft picks, and he was number one overall. So a lot of a lot of those mock drafts, you know, they can they can be right, but you know, most of them are just incorrect for the fans. Which it's cool to, it's cool to know that my name is up there at the top, but no, I do not pay I do not pay much attention to those mock drafts. I kind of just stay stay with myself. Uh, Keep a keep a straight head. Don't I never get a big head. So I'm really just spending time with my teammates and loving on them. Do what I got to do. You mentioned uh, pass rush. Uh, how much of a 
with Coach Eason and a lot of his drills he does with hand technique and things like that. How much of a presence has he been and his expertise been for the entire group at trying to improve that area in your, in your eyes? It's been a huge improvement uh, using his NFL knowledge and his expertise coming down. He's really is working on the little things, whether it be timing, hand placement, eyes, a lot of the stuff that people on the outside looking in don't see and don't really re recognize that are very important, whether it's your footsteps, where my eyes are on the uh, tackle's hands, how the tackle's set in. Like he's really teaching us, he's really teaching us the game and like make, making sure that we understand pass rushing and playing the run. So it's been, it's, it's been a, uh, it's been great having him down, down here. What's your impressions of Wes Goodwin so far having seen him in camp now and spring and everything? Well, I've, I've, well, I'm sure a lot of us have told you, but uh, we've all we've always been high on Wes. We've always we've never questioned his knowledge. We, if anything, he's probably one of the smartest one of the smartest guys that I know. Uh, so yeah, I've, I I never really questioned what he says because I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure he knows what he's talking about, knowing his experience down here in uh, Clemson and his uh, NFL experience with the Cardinals and whatnot. He's he's done a great job the entire spring and fall camp, and you know I expect nothing less and. I think it'll do a great job. Do you see your role changing at all in his scheme or close to the same? No, nah, uh, if anything, uh, Wes, he's a, he's, uh, he's a player's coach. He comes he comes to us and asks us, what's the best way for me to call this call or do you like this call? You know, what what are the what are the type of calls that you like? Do you do you want to stay in the box? Do you want to, you know, go inside the tackle, stuff like that. So him asking us those questions brings up brings us more respect for him, so no, I don't. I don't think my role necessarily will change, but you know, let's go off of that. Miles, such a great tradition of incredible defensive line play here at Clemson. How much do you cherish the responsibility of being part of that next crew? Uh, I mean, I love. It. I'm, you know, talking to a lot of the older guys, uh, Christian, uh, AB, talking to some of them. You know, point, they're you know really pointing pointing into us, knowing that they're in the NFL, giving us knowledge, talking to Dex sometimes. Uh, it's it's really cool to have my name mentioned in, in that next big D line group. It's uh, you know I take a lot of respect to that, and you know I I really try to place it. I stand it uh, every time I hit the field. What's some of the advice those older guys have given you? Uh, ooh, don't get the big head. Don't let those outside distractions you know get too big because if you let those outside distract, with especially with NIL, if you let those outside distractions get too big, you can easily go down. On the playing field, you go down to playing time and whatnot. So, you know, stay where you are, stay in the now, win today. That's that's pretty much the biggest advice they give us. Miles, what have you just seen out of a guy like Jaheim Lawson so far? Oh, very very explosive. Uh, you know, working on his working on his technique, work, like coming from his high school to here, it's a big change. He'll probably say the same, uh, technician wise. He's a he's a very athletic kid, but when it comes down to playing the run, it's just it's really just small stuff, really just small stuff. And that's a lot of us when we come straight from high school that we all need to work on. So yeah. Are there any young guys on either side of the ball that caught your eye? Oh man, about to go on the O line. Blake Miller, Colin Sadler, both huge guys. <laughs> no, they're very aggressive. They know how to they know how to uh, block on the run. Very good on the, very good on the run block. Still one in the flash block, but. Although they're still learning on the pass block, they're very good where they are now. And they're they're both making those huge strides to become that offensive line that they need to be. And you know, D-line Caden Story uh, during the double W drill yesterday, he, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect, but you know, he surprised me, did a very good job going against the line yesterday. And, and Blake in particular, what's it like going up against him? I mean, he's a guy that's potentially can be a starting right tackle. Yeah. He's not like a depression. Um, he's a he is a he's a player that can easily be coached. He loves to listen. He's not a big talker. He barely says anything on the field. But I'm the same way. I don't really say much on the field. He just does that, does what he's supposed to do. Does what he knows to do. And if you call him over, try to talk to him and coach him, he will come. He will listen. And he will take what you said and put it onto the field. Put it on film. So he's a he is a coach's player. He's a really good kid. So yeah, I expect, I, I expect a lot out of him. Talked about NIL. How do you handle that 
during the season you just shut that down and not really take any deals or do you let an agent handle that? How do you figure that out? Uh, I guess in my position I'm very blessed to have parents that are right over my shoulder so a lot of a lot of that stuff I pass it on to them and they handle it so because of course I'm doing football and then I'm in construction science so with football in school that's that's already a lot of my hands so with that NIL coming in like the outside distractions that I talked about I try not to let that get too big and like pass that weight on to my parents and let them do that. Is it meaningful money I guess like obviously God can tell us how much it was meaningful but I guess is it a meaningful amount or kind of how we describe uh, I guess a moderate amount, not enough to get by, but yeah, that much. You're talking uh, about the free list, I think Bruce Feldman said you run 4-5, 40, or high 4-5s, like when's the last time you've been actually timed, is it still around there? Uh, oh, for sure, it might be even faster, honestly. In high school, I was clocked at a 4, I was, well, I got a 4-5, 3-4-5 four, something four, five, like that, but yeah, three, haven't run a 40 since yeah, then. So we'll see. We'll see you there in the uh, combine, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Are you, again, you said like not really looking at the mock drafts and stuff like that, but I mean, is there a sense that this is an important season, knowing that people are looking at you and that could be around the corner? Uh. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, no, I knowing that there's eyes on me that kind of, I don't really. I try not to think about that too much because I can like bring up the nerves, but I just try to. Like I said, stay stay within who I am. I know what I can do, and, you know, go day by day, training, focusing on my, focusing on my nutrition, focusing on uh, practice, focusing on my teammates, and you know, just going day by day. Don't let the outside distractions flood, flood our ship, and you know, just win the now, really. Carlos, I know you don't want to look too far ahead, but you mentioned those two sides of the Florida State that still kind of bother you. Is that a game that you're really looking forward to whenever it comes to here? Uh, to be honest, I really have not thought about it that much. I really have my eyes set on the two scrimmages that we have the next few days in Georgia Tech, honestly. But now thinking about NC State, of course, it's, it's probably going to be a good game. So, yeah, it will be a game that I will look forward to. But, you know. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Any other questions? Thanks, Thanks, Bob. Thanks Bob.